Welcome to Forthright, recorded June 10, 2022. I'm Sulani Madsen. Have you spotted any sprinklers running on automatic timers in the middle of recent downpours? Or maybe spraying down you and half the street while walking your dog? Wasted water is annoying, whether it's on your water bill or the neighbor's. Last week, the Spokane City Council voted to restrict watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and limit the number of days. There's exceptions for new plantings, vegetable gardens, other special situations. Naturally, when there are so many exceptions, many people will declare themselves exceptional and use the exceptions to skirt the rule, or they'll take note of the no watering hours limited to two days per week and water twice as long on the days watering is allowed, or run more sprinklers at one time, or any other number of ways of getting around the system. Real conservation efforts require education not on arbitrary rules, but on ecological principles. And one of those principles is knowing how much water there really is and, and being honest with ourselves about the quality and the abundance of the Spokane Valley Rathrum Aquifer. So here's a reading of my column published on June 2nd, 2022 in the Spokesman Review, headline, Don't Need Scary Headlines to Promote Conservation. There are many good reasons to conserve water on your lawn this summer. Worries about a shrinking snowpack aren't on the list. Despite alarming front page headlines, Washington's watersheds have had higher than average snowpack in 14 of the last 17 years, including this year. That's why the baseline for measuring normal was increased by about 3% for the decade starting in 2021. Without the new baseline, today's reported percentages would be even higher. As of Wednesday, the Natural Resource Conservation Service snow water equivalent measurements for Washington watersheds range from a low of 146% of normal in the North Puget Sound to 1,850% in the lower Yakima Basin. The Spokane watershed is at 180% and Upper Columbia and Pend Oreille are both above 197%. This year's snowmageddon is courtesy of back-to-back -back La Nina patterns, a contributing factor to the trend of increasing snowpack in the Pacific Northwest. Snowpack is not a problem. And based on the precipitation modeling forecast, the Department of Ecology dropped drought declarations in Western Washington and downgraded most of Eastern Washington to drought advisory status, mostly due to precipitation deficits holding over from last year. The drought emergency declaration remains for only five watersheds where predictions fall below a statutory drought threshold of 75% of normal. The Department of Health reported the impact will be primarily on shallow groundwater wells in the mid-Columbia region, not on municipal water supplies, and not on Spokane. So why conserve water in the city if there's not a drought emergency? Good stewardship of natural resources is always a wise decision, and cities are no notorious disruptors of natural systems. Hard surfaces in urban areas interrupt the water cycle, which relies on surface capture, biofiltering, and slow release. Tearing out lawns in favor of xeriscaping with rock or mulch adds to the urban e heat island effect and removes natural filters from the system. Maintaining lawns, rain gardens, and grassy swales are key to a healthy water cycle, and sometimes they need watering. The rules limiting watering hours passed by the Spokane City Council technically went into effect Wednesday, but stricter rules wouldn't go into effect until next year, with a focus this summer on education. Not watering during the hottest part of the day or in high wind sounds like good topics for education, but conserving water takes more than just turning off the tap according to a citywide schedule. The focus should be how landscape management is affecting the water cycle overall and how do we best tailor watering schedules for specific locations. Lawns have taken the hit for years as chemically dependent water absorbers, but there's no need for lawns to be as toxic as we've made them, according to Randy Booker, founder of Turf Evolution, Inc. They can be just as beneficial as a grape meadow and will still pull carbon into the ground, stop erosion, and cool the air. Lawns are too often tied up with toxic methods. They don't need as much water as people think they do, said Booker. Spokane has a great diversity of soil types, making one-size-fits-all watering recommendations frustrating for city residents. Booker has been a golf course manager and turf consultant for years and knows the challenges of maintaining green lawns on sandy soils. His work is one of the case studies in the upcoming 2022 documentary, Kiss the Ground, and his focus is on bringing a regenerative agriculture framework to basic turf management. Most discussion of water conservation focuses on quantity and timing. 
More important is the absorption and holding capacity of the soil combined with the right turf species. Kentucky bluegrass is notoriously drought intolerant with shallow roots. Fescues have deep roots, chasing water more effectively in faster draining soils. And instead of relying on chemical fertilizer, think compost. If you can build up your organic matter, then your soil holds more water, Booker said. If I just had a compost pile and not a big area, I'd go out with a wheelbarrow and shovel and scatter it like I was hand feeding the chickens, end quote. On a larger area, Booker suggested using pelletized compost and a fertilizer spreader. Take a step forward and start to incorporate organic matter, he said. Sand will hang on to a little bit of water, but not for long. So increasing organic matter to increase water holding capabilities will let you water less frequently or just throw out less water each time you water. The end is the same, less water used, end quote. In a year when there is no drought emergency declared in the middle Spokane water resource inventory area, which includes the Spokane Valley Rathrum Prairie Aquifer, the city of Spokane may want to pivot to a more long-term vision and reconsider punitive water rates hitting poorer households hardest. It's easy to reschedule watering. It takes time to build organic matter to reduce the need. And if the trend of more frequent La Nina events with colder and wetter Pacific Northwest winters continues, we have time. <clears throat> so once again, feedback was mostly positive and mostly brief, but there were a few longer emails or posts on the Substack board like this one from Hal Dixon. Hal writes, I have a neighbor who knows an engineer who supervises about 30 environmental engineers. He asked him about the need for conserving water. The engineer noted that while it couldn't hurt, there's no real need to conserve water in this matter. It is a feel-good political stunt, his words, to gain notoriety within the environmental community. This is not Southern California. It is Eastern Washington, where we have more water flowing beneath us than 10 times the number of people would need. And that water flowing beneath us, um, I might mention, this is my words, uh, it's part of that aquifer. It's, you know, we're not mining ancient water uh, when people in Spokane are using water. It's part of that ongoing water cycle. So we're not facing the same kind of challenges that they are in Southern California, Arizona, in the desert, where they're either diverting water from another watershed or they are mining ancient water. Spokane Valley's the Spokane Valley Rathrum Prairie Aquifer is a sustainable water cycle, recycling water in and through the aquifer every year. Um, Steve Bush sent his feedback to me by forwarding the letter that he sent to Mayor Woodward, one that he uh, later sent a version of that onto the Spokane City Council after they overrode her veto. Um, Steve has been a Spokane area resident for over 40 years. He researches, writes, and comments on environmental issues from a pro property rights perspective. But his early years involved uh, a lot of involvement with the radical environmental movement. And he has an educational background in natural resource management and, and work ex experience with the U.S. Forest Service. So those all give Steve a unique perspective on environmental topics. Steve's blog can be found at oldmanoftheski.com. A copy of Steve's letter is published on Substack for subscribers uh, on my Substack. For those of you who prefer an audio format, I'm going to read you the letter to Mayor Woodward, forming support for her video of the water ordinances, and read it in its entirety. Uh, Dear Mayor Woodward, Thank you for your refusal to allow the City Council to initiate an unnecessary and highly restrictive water ordinance on the city's citizens of Spokane. Please consider the following. The decision to cut water use by 25%, as outlined in the Spokane City Water Conservation Master Plan, is based on an arbitrary decision not to increase pumping capacity from the aquifer. The council merely wants to lower our regional and individual water footprint as part of a wider political agenda. A water footprint is a measure of water use compared to other people living in other regions. However, reducing Spokane's community water footprint is not only unnecessary, but will not increase the water supply for other people in other regions, including those living directly downstream from Spokane. Facts. Monitoring wells show that the SVRP aquifer is at or above historic levels. An average of nearly 1 billion gallons of water flows into the aquifer on a daily basis annually, the recharge rate, and nearly the identical amount is measured in the outflow, discharge rate. The estimated aquifer volume of 10 trillion gallons, gallons indicates a robust and healthy water source 
that could easily sustain additional pumping and increased regional population growth for thousands of years. It has also been scientifically documented that nearly all of the water pumped out of the aquifer for all regional uses either returns to the aquifer directly, recharges, or flows back into the Spokane River. Low river volume during certain times of the year is a natural part of any water cycle all over the world. Low flows in the Spokane River above Flora Road during late summer months can be especially dramatic due to the fact that this section of river is considered a losing reach. In this upper section, the Spokane River sits above the aquifer and continuously loses volume to the aquifer through the underlying porous unconsolidated gravels. The same phenomena happens throughout the year, but is most noticeable in late summer. This is also why we do not see creeks flowing out of area lakes, such as Newman, Hauser, or Liberty Lakes. Water flowing out of our lakes flows underground and directly recharges the aquifer through these same unconsolidated gravels. While the Spokane River directly recharges the SVRP aquifer from Lake Coeur d'Alene to near Flora Road, the aquifer in turn feeds or recharges the river through much of its course through central Spokane down through Peaceful Valley. These are called gaining reaches due to the fact that the aquifer adds to the river's volume. Regardless of what the council believes, the rate of flow in the Spokane River is directly impacted by its position in relation to the aquifer itself, as well as discharge controls at the Post Falls Dam. Water that is withdrawn from the SVRP aquifer for municipal use, including watering lawns, parks, and golf courses, has no measurable effect on Spokane River flows. The Spokane City Council has chosen a nonsensical, unscientific, radical water conservation agenda that will have no discernible effect on river volume or the aquifer. While releasing more water at the Post Falls Dam would result in increased river volume through the upper reaches, Restricting water use by area residents will have no measurable effect on either the aquifer or river volume. There is absolutely no cost savings involved in the Spokane Water Conservation Master Plan. Restricting water use and raising water rates will result in a far greater negative economic and environmental impact than investing in increased pumping capacity and keeping water use affordable. Furthermore, water rationing and increased fees will disproportionately impact lower income neighborhoods. Dried out or neglected lawns will negatively impact home values. Increases in destructive pest species associated with drier conditions, coupled with an increase in the fire hazard due to the push for alternative landscaping, in other words, bark or mulch and drought resistant plant species, poses a danger to the entire community. The reduction in maintaining green and healthy landscapes will increase the heat island effect requiring more energy consumption for cooling homes and businesses. The Spokane region can, can continue to blossom, but only if the Spokane City Council reverses its counterproductive course and if you, Mayor Woodward, remain committed to protecting private property rights and ensuring the best interests of the citizens of Spokane. Signed, Stephen M. Bush. Well, the mayor vetoed the council's uh, ordinance, but unfortunately the council overrode the veto. So now Spokane will embark on a Southern California style watering program for an entirely different ecosystem and watershed situation. With apologies to all the lovely Karens I know, encouraging an atmosphere of Karenism to enforce rules unsuited to the Spokane watershed will not advance the cause of good stewardship of natural resources, including water. You can subscribe to these posts on Substack at sulanimadson.substack.com. Subscriptions are still free in 2022 with expanded offerings under a paid option in 2023 and a discount for early supporters. For more locally focused news and opinion, follow the Spokane Talks Media YouTube channel or your favorite podcast source. Thanks for joining me.